Today, we will walk through the detailed steps on how to create local users and groups in Windows 11, whether you are managing you know, a home PC or setting up a work environment, this will help you to effectively manage the user account. So as you have seen in the previous video that we have configured and initialized the Windows 11 Azure VM, and now we will move forward from that point to create the local users and group and this is the very basic thing and we are trying to keep the things from basic to advanced to intermediate then to the advanced level to summarize the whole understanding and steps to give you the zero to hundred percent knowledge regarding the product so let's move to the Azure VM our Windows 11 VM. Now you can see the Windows 11 environment on your screen. So to let's open and we can begin by opening the control panel and you can do this by pressing the Windows key like that. And here you can simply just type the control panel as you do in the Windows 10 environment. So you can type here and then you can type control panel and here it start appears in the search result so you can click to open the control panel right once you're in the control panel you want to switch to the large icon just click to the category and select the light large icon or small icon whatever you like and whatever feels good for you you can set it as per your requirement and you can restore back to the small icons as well and this gives you easier access to individual settings if you select the category small icon then you can navigate to the user account and you will see options to manage different aspects of user account so let's click here to view all these aspects of creating the user account once you open the user account and that start appears on the screen, then you can click to manage another account option, which is here. And this will display all the accounts currently on your system. And this works like that because if you want to see the list of all your user account on your Windows 11 machine, on your you know Windows 11 environment, so this is one of the way to find out the list of all the current user in your Windows 11 machine. So let's click to see the whole list. And you have just JSS admin account here, JSSD admin account currently available on this Windows 11 machine. And this shows that this is the actual account. So that's how you will get the detail of the other account as well but in this case we have just single account that is available in Windows 11 that's why you're not seeing any other account here so let's click to the user account back and here you have a few more options like account control settings and on the left you can manage your credentials you can create password reset days manage your file encryption configure advanced user profile properties change my environment variable so you have few more options on the left but to create the new account from user account so you have to go to the manage account and to add a new user select option that is add a new user in the pc setting and this will take you to the windows setting for user management so let's click to this link and it is going to navigate you here like that. So after watching this screen, you can realize and you were wondering that you can come here. You can get access to these options from the system as well. Yes, right. You can open the system settings and click to the accounts and then it will navigate you here as well. So the, this is one of the way and that is another way. So you can try both as per your ease and convenience. Now here you have to just do what you have to click to the add account and it's going to open this window like that where you can see the users on the left and groups. So you have both options available. You can create the user if you want 
and you know you can go for the groups as well if you want to create the group so here you'll have the option to sign in with the Microsoft account as well now here as you have clicked to the add account and once you have this screen you can do plenty of other things as well like like you can change the user membership of the groups you can also manage the group memberships as well so here on the user you can just right click on the user and select the new user and here you can provide the basic details of the user and password and once you fill in you can click next or click create and it will add the user so right now here if you create the user if you want to create just click right click to the user and select the new user and here you can type test user and for the username you can full name you can type the whole name test dash user description could be anything then the password like that and you can go with this option as well this will do what you can share you know what happens that when in this windows environment you when you create the account or even in the local active directory or on the microsoft entra id things work like that when you create the account on the first time as a system administrator sysadmin or you know the desktop support or help desk support so you does what that you create the account and go with the basic password and then you set up the policy you set up the options that when this new user try to log in to their account on their windows 11 machine or windows 11 10 machine so what's going to happen that while the login user will be asked to change the password at the next logon so this will does what it will keep maintaining the security aspects of your account by doing what by asking you to change the password once you are logged in with this account and whole lot of this thing that I was discussing and talking about will be happen and would happen by clicking here while creating the account that user must change password at next logon so if you remove the check user will use the same password and if you select select and go with this option password never expires so there will be no expiry to the password but it needs to be compliant with the policies account policies password policies you make for your users and devices or if you select this one user cannot change the password so the user will keep using the same password that you set for this user account so currently we are going to go with the basic policy thing that is the user must change the password at the next logon and let's create the account and the account is just created in a in a second it take not too much time and after creating the user you can manage their permissions you can click on the newly created account and you can change the account type so you can manage it from here as well but we are going to we rather change it from the control panel to give you the more visibility and the more control that you'll have on your user account now we're back to the control panel and here if you click to manage another account that i showed you to see the list of the user account the local user account of your machine then you have the test user account test test user this is the full name and here you have these bunch of options couple of options on the left account name change the password change the account type so to provide the privileges and the rights to this newly created account and to manage their permission you have to click to change account type and once you once you click to it you will have the screen and here you have two standard option by default I would say the default option for managing the permission one is the standard that says what the standard account can use most software and change system settings that don't affect other users or the security of this PC and if you go for the administrator 
that have the complete control over the PC, they can change any settings and access all of the files and programs stored on the PC. And if you further explore it, so you can assign this account either the standard or the administrator, and a standard user has, you know, the limited access as, as it is mentioned, while an administrator has full control over the system. So you can choose the one that fits your need and click OK. So let's say we were going to make it the administrator. And then we can click to, to change account type. And if you come back, you can see that this account is now became what? The administrator. And here you can verify that. So this is how you are managing, you know, what the account permissions. Now let's talk about the groups because how to create the groups and how to manage the group permission is a part of this topic that we are covering right now. So to move on to creating the user groups, which is especially useful if you are managing multiple user and for this you need to do what the same thing let's close the control panel and all the options because we are going to guide you from the scratch that if you are intended and you wanted to just create the groups and you didn't create the user account yet so how you can get the access and the options to create the user group so let's click to the windows key and the x key and select the computer management from the menu so here we don't have direct access to this machine because we are on the VM. So for that purpose, we are going to use the on-screen keyboard and this will help you and also shows you that what keys we are using to get access to the specific feature of Windows 11. So let's click to the Windows in the X key. And here you can see that it opens what it opens all the options that you get once you right click on the start like that so when you right click here or if you want to see you can do if, if you want to just use a shortcut key to get access to this menu you can right click on the start or you can press what the windows plus x here click to the computer management right so here on the computer management this is screen takes you to these options now expand the local users and group and here you can either click to the user or the groups it's up to you it is it is as per your requirement once inside the computer management you can get these options easily and this is where you can create new groups and manage them now to create a new group you can select the groups from here and right click on the group and select the new group and here you will have this window on the screen where you will give the username group and description and then you are done. So it will take not much time. So let me type gss-user. This is going to be the user group of our user group name of our list of users. Then you will add the description according to the requirement, whatever you can set here. The group name is mandatory so you have to provide the group name while creating the group now after you know typing the name and when you are creating the group so you should have to you should add the group users in the group as well now here you can type any user so if I type let's say T user that we just created so here I'm going to type T user and then click to the check names and here it found and it detected the username from the machine. That's why we just type the few letters and rest of the work will be done by the Windows environment. And then once we find out that this is the authentic user account we have and we are going to add it to the group. So for adding this, you have to simply click to add and by confirming and clicking OK, this will be add. And this gives them the specific permission associated with that group. So this needs to be understand by the user 
that if you make the group the administrator of the machine, so what's going to happen? All the user that are the part of this group will have the same rights and permission to act accordingly. So you do what in your corporate environment, in your real world IT environment, you create groups, you assign permissions to the group, and then you will add the user to these groups. And what happens that after adding the user to the specific group that have the rights, all the admin rights, so in this way, all the users in the group will have the same rights. And this is the easiest way to provide certain rights to your certain users. So this is the basic purpose of creating the groups because you can manage your few users separately with, you know, with the VIP level, you can ex you can manage them. You can provide different permission and passes. So different rights and privileges. So how you can do this, how you can achieve that, you create the group separately and you select few of the users that are the part of the admin or then they should have some rights regarding manage things and regarding just view logs and settings and events and all that stuff, you know. So you keep all these guys and you take these guys and keep in this admin group and rest of the user will be separated and these bunch of users will have the same rights that you assign to the group. So this is how you can manage and how you can achieve that, how you can provide permissions and access to the group. So as you can see that we have clicked to the users and we see the list of users. But as soon as we click to the groups, you can see that you have most of the groups that are by default and or pre-created with the Windows installation. And one of the group that is highlighting a lot and that is more meaningful is the administrator. So what it does that when you whenever you assign admin privileges and when you want to assign and provide certain rights to specific user, you do what you add that user to the specific group. So let's say that we have discussed that if you want, if you have created a JSS user at the admin group and you want to assign the admin privileges to the specific user, you take that user from any group, delete from there, and then add that user in this group, and the user will automatically get the assigned rights. Why? Because it is the part of the admin group. So how you can assign membership from the administrator group, you can click to the administrator properties, and JSS admin is already the part of this group, then you can do what you can type T user, check names, and here it is detected the username with the FQDN with the directory, then click apply, and this user have you know what the administrator account access and which you can verify from the control panel as well. So let's open the control panel. So whenever you're doing things from the GUI and from CLI, the same thing happens that when you provide the privilege access, the admin access to the specific user, it adds that user to the administrator group. And that's what happened behind the screen. Now let's click to the manager account. And here you can see test dash user. And it is what the administrator. So thanks for the watching with this video.